What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Fight Light SCR Raider. So, what is it? Well, it is a 5.56 caliber semi-automatic pistol with a Raptor grip similar to the Mossberg Shockwave except in rifle form. Now, it has a Raptor grip as opposed to a uh, buffer tube or a pistol brace that allows a much shorter length than most other pistols of this type can offer you. A much shorter length of pull and a much shorter overall length, making it A, a lot lighter and B, a lot easier to store. It's very light at 3.9 pounds and it only has an overall length of around 20 inches because of that Raptor grip and the seven inch barrel. The Raptor grip also makes it a lot more streamlined overall package as long as you use a smaller magazine like a 20 or a 10 inch grip. As you can see here, just overall, as far as height wise as well, it's much shorter because it doesn't have the pistol grip and the 30 round magazine coming down. Another thing you can also do is you can drop the red dot as I was running originally. I was running it just over the uh, uh, rail here without a uh, spacer. Now you want the height over bore because usually an Air 15 buffer tube comes right out the back and you can't get your cheek low enough. Now you can get your cheek low enough on this. The problem I had is with this short of grip, a lot of times I'm using this C-clamp grip that some of you like, some of you don't. And if I use that C-clamp grip without an offset mount, I get my thumb in the way. So either I shoot a way that I don't like to, and the reason why I don't like to shoot this way uh, is because I felt like I was inching my thumb just a little too close to that compensator, and I like my left thumb. It does some things for me, and I want to keep it around. So I felt more comfortable wrapping it, and if I was going to do that, I had to add a spacer, which is okay, because I've got lots of little red dots running around the place, and I just threw this one on here instead of the original primary arms that I had on it. Now it takes standard AR-15 accessories, as you can see there. It comes with an M-Lock rail, and I have the Trigicon RMR with a standard mount, and I also have this uh, Magpul, the new angled foregrip, the M-Lock grip. I forget what they're calling it, but this is their brand new one. I'm testing that on there as well, and I threw a battle comp on it. One of the reasons why I went with the battle comp is because, well, first, I, if you put an actual brake break on there, like say a Lantac or something, this thing already has so much blast <laughs> that you would not like that. Like you put like an M72 brake on here, wow, you would really notice. If you're looking for fireballs and flame, this guy's your ticket. Even shooting this at the hip, you feel like you're shooting a howitzer. So be careful what muzzle device you put on there. I might actually put an A2 flash hider here on eventually, depending on how long I keep this. Now, one of the ways they got this to work is actually pretty cool. It has an eight lug rotating bolt and a rat tail similar to that of a semi-automatic shotgun that allows it to function without the buffer tube system. Now, it's not that much different because with a bolt change, you can pretty much put the upper on whatever lowers you want. So that's pretty cool as well. Just a standard upper with a different bolt and lower receiver. 100% made in the UFSA, which is really, really nice. And it comes for around $850 total. Now, the first reason why I bought it is cool factor alone. I had to try one of these. I see people using them. I see similar stuff in movies. And I was like, I shoot a lot of guns, but I've never shot anything quite like this. And I wanted to test it out and see how functional it was. Even though it looks very different and very cool, it could also be fairly functional in the right situation. Like, let's say you're trying to just hide a truck gun for the perfect moment and you absolutely have no space, so you're sticking this in a kit underneath the seat of an airplane, or if you're going uh, whitewater rafting, something like that. There's a lot of niches where this could be very, very useful. A lot of you asked me why I didn't go with 300 Blackout because they do make this in 5.56 and 300 Blackout. Now, 300 Blackout usually functions better in smaller rifles because of the dwell time and it has a lot more punch out of shorter barrels because 5.56 relies a lot on barrel length to get that uh, tumbling effect that makes it so lethal. Now, why I went with this is because 5.56 is a lot cheaper. Now, I do have a 300 Blackout, but 300 Blackout is very expensive to feed and I was more interested in the type of rifle in particular. I have 300 blackouts and things like that already so I know the difference between calibers but I was interested in the function of the rifle in particular and I know that if I wanted to put let's say a thousand rounds for this it's gonna be a lot cheaper for me to shoot uh, 223 than it is for your blackout and one of the first things I want to talk about and get it out of the way is gonna be reliability now some of you might think that if you shorten up this rifle and change the way the rifle operates that you're gonna have reliability problems and you'd be right I didn't have too many malfunctions with this, but I definitely had more than I would in a standard BCM rifle. But when the malfunctions did happen, they were not something you could fix with like a tap and rack or a standard malfunction drill. Basically, every one of the malfunctions took the gun completely out of the fight. 
There were several where the round was completely trapped inside the barrel and the extractor completely sheared part of the round off and I had to get a barrel push rod to actually push the round out of the barrel. Now it was the empty casing, but it was so stuck in there I couldn't get it with a uh, with a pocket knife. I actually had to get a push rod and push it out. So if that happens while you're in a self-defense situation, you might as well throw the gun at them because you're never going to have time to clear that. I also had one or two light primer strikes in there and the bolt would get stuck and wouldn't release. I wouldn't be able to pull it to the rear and I had to slam the butt of the pistol grip on the ground and hold the charging handle to actually get the round to and bolt to release. And lastly, the last malfunction that I had was the trigger would not release the hammer on the rifle. So I would pull the trigger and nothing would happen no matter how many times I would cock the hammer by pulling the charging handle, it would not release by pulling the trigger. And eventually that worked itself out after me kind of beating on it, tearing it apart, putting it back together, and then eventually it just got itself unstuck. But that's another glaring thing that I was really concerned about. Now we'll get into accuracy. Accuracy was good for what it is. Now I have to say that I think this platform is a great idea for shotguns. Because from the ready position, like up kind of just hovering it over your eye, it's easy to shoot shotguns because they don't have quite the spread that a movie would let you believe, but they still have, let's say, a six inch spread at 10 yards, that kind of thing. You have a little room for air. With a rifle, not so much. There's also a lot more blast from a, five, particularly a seven inch barreled 5.56 AR-15 than you're gonna have from a 14 inch barreled shotgun. So a lot of blast, a lot of noise, and real, real issues ergonomically getting accurate shots. Now I could shoot relatively easily, within 20 yards, which I really think is what this rifle is designed for. If I was been 20 yards and I wanted a short compact weapon that could only shoot 20 yards, I wouldn't pick a, I wouldn't pick a rifle. A rifle, the reason why they're so good is they're ubiquitously lethal at short range and long range. So if I'm shooting at 100 yards, I'm still lethal with a rifle, I'm no longer lethal with a shotgun. 50 yards lethal with a rifle, not lethal with a shotgun. 25 yards, still lethal with a rifle, now starting to get lethal with a shotgun. You see where I'm going with this? This kind of takes out why you would want a rifle in the first place. Personally, for me, at a close distance, I would rather have the same maneuverability with, let's say, the shockwave, but I have that extra spread and I have more lethal killing power. When we did actually get this on the ground and prone, and I got it on some sandbags, we were shooting about four inch groups at 50 yards. Uh, I'm sure the barrel itself is more capable of that, but me as a shooter with this type of platform, it was just very difficult. Now offhand, I could still hit IPSC targets at 100 yards about 80% of the time, but if you were under stress and you had to hit a human target, I'm a fairly experienced shooter, I'm definitely not the best in the world, but even I would have a hard time landing rounds on an actual person up to about 25 yards. 25 yards is about the max distance that I would be comfortable using this in a self-defense situation. And as I said, for a rifle, I just think there are better options, you know, something like a shotgun or even a handgun, I think I could fire more accurately than I could this particular platform. Okay. Same problem over and over again, failure to extract. Spent round. Now ergonomics, the greatest strength and its greatest weakness is the unique design, making it very fun to shoot, very short, and lots of fire and blasts. Probably the loudest gun that I've ever shot up close. Now it's very handy, lightweight, and short, and like I said, between 20 yards and in, it would make a very capable firearm. I think there are better options, but if you think that you couldn't be killed by this 20 yards and in, you're absolutely mistaken. But as I said before, when we we're talking about accuracy, it's a real trade-off. Not having that stock makes it much harder and much slower to shoot. And inside 20 yards, I really think speed matters a great deal. If you see that guy the same time he sees you, and you're using this, and he's using a shotgun, even if he's a lot less experienced shooter, he's probably going to get you simply because of how difficult this is to operate. As a home defense weapon in particular, if you got up in the middle of the night, and it was a bump in the night situation, you grab this because it's easier to grab and more comfortable, and I totally get that, but you lit off, let's say, three or four rounds inside your house with this, this is so unbelievably loud and so much blast that not only would it disorient you, but it might cause permanent hearing damage. 
So what's my overall opinion? Well, personally, I originally bought this, not for this in particular, but I was gonna use this until I got it SBR, and then I was going to get one of those lowers. The whole thing, I was gonna buy a regular uh, SCR rifle, I was gonna buy this lower, and I was gonna SBR the rifle, and I was gonna swap this out, because I thought it would be really cool to have an SBR type rifle like this with a traditional stock. I've always kind of wanted that, and I saw this as a way to do it. Problem is, is that I had enough malfunctions in this that were what I would consider fight stopping malfunctions that I would just not trust this for anything but plinking. And I have so many other AR-15s chambered in 5.56, even AR-15 pistols and SBRs that fill the role of even a fun gun so much more than this. So basically what that leads me to own this for is just cool factor alone. And it is really cool. When people saw this, especially when they saw it when I posted it on my Facebook or my Instagram, uh, they were really excited about it my friends wanted to shoot this the problem is after they shoot it they don't really want to shoot it that much more because it's not as much fun to shoot as it is to look at and for me personally I'm not a gun collector I'm I'm a shooter I shoot all of my guns and I shoot them a lot I would have to give this honestly a 5 out of 10 I was kind of disappointed but honestly I should have known better I know about enough about guns to know how they would shoot the only real downside to this that I see is the reliability problems that I had you know if you get into a gun like this, you should know that it's going to be more difficult to shoot. And that would be a total trade-off for me if the gun was reliable. If the gun was reliable, I think the best case scenario would be to get this in, let's say, a 300 blackout, which is a more potent caliber and it is more reliable in this short package. If you had different experiences with this, please let me know because I would love for you to change my opinion and I only have one rifle to do this review from. I am a small YouTube channel and I don't get these rifles sent to me. I have to buy them personally. So if you had different different experience, let's say you have 2,000 rounds to your rifle, please let me know how it operated. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Make sure to check out the link below to a local homeless shelter that could use your help in Ames and also to my Patreon account, which will enter you into the monthly giveaway. And this month I will be giving away a Tailhook Mod 2, which I actually think is the biggest gift that I've given away in a giveaway so far. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your ho local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Okay. Same problem over and over again. Failure to extract. Spent round. Oh my god, are you fucking either yet? It is so hot. Need the pusher out again. <laughs>